G'day Internet and welcome to a slightly different video. A couple of years ago uh, I produced a short film uh, for Are You OK Day, uh, which here in Australia is a suicide awareness day, uh, primarily around mental health. Uh, it was a video that I did purely on a whim, I literally thought of the idea as I was driving home. Uh, I walked in the house, dumped my stuff, set up some camera and lights and hit record. However, that was 2019 and things in the world have changed quite a bit since then. We are now living in the middle of a pandemic uh, and one of the things that has affected a lot of people is their mental health being living in lockdown. So this year I decided to reach out to some of my fellow YouTubers to possibly get their thoughts on mental health uh, regarding how they deal with it, if they suffer from any kind of mental health issues, and try and start the conversation and to let people know that they're not alone uh, if they're feeling a little down. Uh, I personally have always been quite open of the fact that I suffer from uh, depression uh, and in my last video I even shook around my packet of uh, antidepressant tablets that I take every morning. However, that's the way I deal with it. What about others? So in this video uh, I have some guests along. Uh, now, the clips that these YouTubers did send me, a lot of them sent, oh, you know, just edit what you need and all the rest of it. But after watching them, um, I kind of felt that editing them was doing uh, what they were trying to say a disservice. So what I'm going to show you is simply everything that they sent me uh, as a whole. Now, some of them did their own editing, which is fine, um, but you're going to get... Uh, the entire video clips that each YouTuber did send me. Um, so this is going to be a long video, however I please ask you to stick around uh, and watch what each of these people have to say. And I will take this opportunity now to thank each and every one of them for stepping up, putting on a camera uh, and telling us about how they deal with their mental health issues. Hi everyone, Mindflare Retro here. Are you okay? Such a simple question could have a lasting positive impact on someone's life, but sadly today there's still a stigma around mental health. There, I said it. Now, if you rolled your eyes and said to yourself, ugh, this again, well, then I say to you, don't get scared off, this is important. If I had said cardiac health or respiratory health or vision health, you probably wouldn't have batted an eye, unless, of course, you might actually have a vision health issue. Mental illness is like any other human illness. It's diagnosable and it's treatable. If you've been diagnosed with asthma, you might have to use an inhaler with medication to help you breathe easier. No stigma there. Mental illness is the same thing with one exception. There is still a negative stigma around acknowledging mental illness issues and the mental illness itself might be crippling the person from actively seeking help. And that's where the rest of us come in. Start a conversation. Organizations like Are You OK in Australia and Bell Let's Talk in Canada are amazing resources for how to understand mental health issues and how to start a conversation to end the stigma and help those in need. Here in Canada, the Bell Let's Talk website lists five simple ways you can help be part of the conversation to eliminate the stigma once and for all. Number one, language matters. The words we use can make all the difference. Words can help, but they can also hurt. Don't refer to people with mental health issues as crazy or say things like, he's a schizo. Be appropriate, saying this person has a mental illness, they have schizophrenia, they have anxiety. Two, educate yourself. When it comes to mental illness, education is key. Having the right tools, knowing the right words to use, and understanding how to correctly speak with someone experiencing mental health issues can make all the difference. Use resources like ruok.org.au or letstalk.bell.ca to help you educate yourself. Three, be kind. Simple kindness can make a world of difference, whether it be a smile, being a good listener, or an invitation to chat over coffee. These are simple acts of kindness that can help open up a conversation and let someone know you're there for them. Number four, 
Listen and ask. It's easy. Are you okay? How can I help? Mental illness is a very common form of human pain and suffering. Being a good listener and asking how you can help or simply just being there for people you care about can be the first step to recovery. And number five, talk about it. Break the silence like we're doing here today. Two-thirds of people with mental health issues suffer in silence, fearing judgment and rejection. Being open to a conversation is the first step towards eliminating the stigma. Know the facts, be kind, be a good listener, and be a friend. One in five people out there has some form of mental health issue, and I am one of those people. For me, it's anxiety, and I suffered with it since I was a child, and I had no idea there was any other way. It was part of my normal state of being. And it wasn't until about 12 years ago that I actually recognized it, sought treatment for it. And I can honestly say that my well-being today is infinitely better. You might be one of those one in five people too, and that's okay. You're not alone. Ask for help. You'll be relieved that you did. And if you feel a family member, friend, or colleague is suffering in silence, don't let them. Simply ask, are you okay? and start that conversation that can change or even save a life. Are you okay? I'm okay today, but I can't say that every day. I have up days, I have down days. My whole life, when I didn't discover this until very recently, like in the last 12 months, but um, I have always suffered from um, what is now called high functioning anxiety, which can, make someone somewhat of a high performer um, because it's the it's the type of anxiousness that um, creates this kind of fear of failure um, it, it's all internal um, really struggle to say no to people all of that kind of thing but over a long period of time high functioning anxiety can can really burn you out and that happened to me earlier this year I pretty much had a a mental breakdown around, oh, I think around the end of May, early June. Um, I went to the doctors and since then I have been taking anti-anxiety medication. Coupled with that, I have been through a number of traumatic experiences in my life. Um, I was eyewitness to a brutal stabbing murder um, in a backpacker's hostel in Spain back in 2001. Um, and I have served overseas many many times and have seen things that I will never unsee things that memories that are as it's sometimes it feels like it was it was just yesterday and and these things bother me they really bother me um but Every one of us has mental health challenges for different reasons. But I wanted to you know, open up and tell my story just a little bit so that you know that you're not alone. And, it, and it's not about you know, whether you suffer from high functioning anxiety or whether you've had military service. You could have had a traumatic childhood. You could just be born with depression. A close friend of mine is di diagnosed with bipolar, he suffers horrific nightmares, um, he takes a lot of medication, but the most powerful thing that he does and what makes me look up to this guy so very much is that he speaks open and honestly about this. And he does this not only among friends, but he does this in the workplace. And it's a really, really powerful thing. For a long time, there was a stigma attached to mental health issues. Um, not discrediting on any women out there who suffer mental health issues, but particularly for men, you know, men were supposed to be tough enough to just get on with it. Well, I really feel like society, certainly where I live in Australia, has really started to turn a corner. And that's because of brave people like my friend Shane, who, who is very open and honest. You know, he's willing to speak up about his own mental health challenges, the struggles that he goes through. And it just makes me respect him and it's made me more comfortable with talk, telling my own story and speaking up and by doing that I find that people they they don't they don't shun you they don't look at you differently they offer support 
So my tips for, for coping, for daily coping with any kind of mental health challenge, be it anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress, lean on your friends, lean on your family, open up and talk. Because quite often these people do not understand the internal struggle until you tell them about it. They can't read your mind and they can be incredibly supportive, your family and friends. There are also professional help, uh, services where you can go for help. You can see your local GP. There are a lot of um, um, different um, phone numbers you can call, for example, Lifeline, um, Beyond Blue, that kind of thing. The most powerful thing we can do to combat our own mental health challenges is to talk about it. And for me personally, um, I really struggled the first few years that I returned home from Iraq. I really struggled. Um, I was abusing drugs and alcohol. You know, I was self-medicating. I wasn't, I was too, again, too proud to go to a GP. I would self-medicate um, with illicit drugs, um, something I'm certainly not proud of, but I have come past that. You know, I'm, I'm not proud of the fact that I still have some some issues with, with, with alcohol, um, but I've at least gotten past my issues with illicit drugs. And what really helped me was finding something that I was incredibly passionate about. And that's my toy collection and, my, and the YouTube channel that, that I enjoy running. But that doesn't mean that every single day running a YouTube channel is pleasant. You'll find in social media, be it whether you're on YouTube or whether you've just got a Facebook page or a Twitter account, you will come across a lot of people who are just out to offend you and bully you and, and put you down. Um, so there are certainly days when, as much as I'm passionate about my YouTube channel, I just, I'm not up to it some days. And that's, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'm blessed with the support of an amazing wife a, who has a beautiful personality and is a loving, caring um, wife and mother um, and keeps a, a fantastic home. Um, you know, and, and, and she's seen me struggle a few times. Um, and it's been, it's been really tough on her. But as I mentioned before about speaking to your friends and, and your family, Particularly if you're going through a bad patch and you're with your wife, I tend to clam up, but I've learned over the years that the best thing I can do is, is open up and talk to her about it. Even if I don't want to talk to, to her about it for very long, at least she understands what's happening and then she doesn't feel as though it's her that's doing something wrong and making me go into a shell and not talk to her. I said at the start of this video, are you okay? I hope you are. I really hope you are. I hope you're having a great day, a wonderful week and a fantastic year. But if for whatever reason today that you're not okay, just know that you're not alone. And reach out to someone, have a chat on the phone, talk to a loved one, or even reach out to a professional service if needed. We all have these challenges in life, but by speaking up, we can help break the stigma against mental health. I hope you're okay today. Cheers. I am often asked how it's possible that I make as many YouTube videos as I do every week for my YouTube channel while I also keep a full-time job. And it's something that I actually wonder about myself sometimes because it, it is a lot of work. But it all stems back to something that happened when I was young. I had this job right out of university that was so stressful to me that it really made me miserable. But I didn't have a lot of work experience at that time, so maybe that was normal? Well, no, I don't think it was normal. And at that point, I had sort of an epiphany, so to speak, where I decided then and there that for the rest of my life, I would never let a job make me feel that way again. I realized that my mental health was more important than a job. Unfortunately, as humans in the world, we have to have a source of income, and that usually means you have to have a job. So you can't just take your job if you don't like it and throw it away, but 
what you can do is try to come up with coping mechanisms to help improve your mental health. And for me, in that particular instance, and I didn't just quit that job, was that I would care less. Now, I was raised to care about the work I was doing, to put effort in to be a good person. But sometimes when you're in a situation where your mental health is being affected, what you think someone else expects of you shouldn't be the way you necessarily have to act. That can put an undue pressure on you that can really affect your mental health in a negative way. So ever since then, what I do is I will either try to cope with the job I have, but if it is something that's not sustainable or good for me in the long run, then I will do my darndest to find a different job or change it in some way that makes it work for me. Now, when it comes to the pressure of the comments on my videos or my patrons expecting videos that come out every week and all the other things that come with being a YouTuber, I have to always remind myself that I do this for one simple reason. I find it really fun. And if there's parts of it that aren't really fun, I'm going to shy away from those and I'm just not going to do them because, again, it's to protect my own mental health and it's my coping mechanism. I consider myself very lucky that I was able to figure out those coping mechanisms and strategies early on at life that has kept me happy through into my adulthood. But not everyone is so lucky to have been able to figure that stuff out. If you're feeling depression, reach out and ask for help. There is nothing wrong and there is no stigma with depression. It is something that all of us as humans deal with. And if you know someone who might be dealing with depression and may not be getting the help that they deserve, reach out to them, ask them, are you okay? How can I help? It can really make the biggest difference. Hi, I'm Jan Beta, and you may know me from my rather enthusiastic videos about repairing and refurbing old computers and old electronics. But I'm not always that enthusiastic. I've been suffering from something that I would call mild depression since around my 20s. And back then I didn't know what it was really. I was just really feeling very, very down and sad. Like sad in a kind of physical way. Like you have a weight sitting on you and have to overcome the weight to just uh, be able to do your daily chores and just the in inability to do things was a main factor and I was, I was rather confused by that because it just hit me out of nowhere basically I was just there was a phase where I couldn't really do anything but lay in bed and uh, stare at the ceiling and contemplate and being unable to get up and just being generally really unable to do things. And the reason why I didn't know what it was, was that nobody really talks about these things publicly. It has changed a bit for the better in recent years, I feel. And that's a good thing, I think, because uh, Depression is something that has to be taken very seriously as a condition because uh, if you are going downwards, the, there's a kind of a downward spiral often that you can go down and uh, get to a point where you just want to hurt yourself or even worse. I was able to get out of that because I met some friends who became very good friends very quickly. Uh, who I was able to talk about these things with and that's a really important factor for me to have people who can relate to these conditions and are able to just be there for you. It just, it's just enough to talk about things sometimes. I was able to just pull myself out of it with the help of some very good people uh, who helped me along the way. But that was a painful and long process. Yeah, recently I kind of fell back uh, into the same feelings I had when I was uh, in my 20s, uh, triggered by the world 
uh, being in the middle of a pandemic and uh, I lost my job. I'm, I'm a full-time YouTuber uh, basically now, which is great, but I it was hard to appreciate because I was kind of sliding back into depression because so many outside things triggered that. And again, I met up with some of the friends from back then who are still my friends and uh, thankfully they helped me. And what also helps is to just open up and uh, I decided to talk more openly about these things publicly, even if that's distracting to some people. It's very difficult to explain mental health issues to um, somebody who hasn't experienced anything like that. It should be talked about more, so maybe it gets kind of normalized because we're not alone. You're not alone. If you are feeling mental health problems, you are not alone. There's so many people. And each time I posted something on Twitter or talked about it briefly in kind of, I, I did some interview stuff and talked about it. And each time I got contacted by so many people who feel the same and who are very happy that they are not alone, basically. And that feeling alone is um, sometimes enough to <clears throat> just make you think about your situation and get out of it. In a nutshell, I would just say, talk about it and be open about it, even if you are running into walls with some people who just don't want to understand and don't want to be empathic about it or they can't because they don't know what it is. It should be, mental health should be talked about a lot more in our society. It is just as bad, if not worse, than physical illness or injury. So, yeah, I think that's all I want to say. I hope you all stay healthy and as I said, I don't wish this on anyone. If you feel bad, seek help, seek friends, talk to people and don't listen to the people who tell you it's nothing and you just have to pull yourself together or something. That's not it. <laughs> Thanks. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who contributed to this video. Uh, me, myself, I'm not doing too bad. Canberra at the moment is in its second significant lockdown. Um, this time for me it seems a little easier. Uh, I've uh, managed to keep myself reasonably busy, uh, well so far at least, uh, and I still have my support structures around me such as my fantastic wife Jess, uh, and my work colleagues and friends. So I hope you uh, do take this opportunity to listen to what these people have to say. Look out for your friends and family in case they may be suffering. Uh, check out a whole bunch of links that I've put down in the description to uh, places where you can get more information and reach out for help. But for now, that will pretty much do it and I'll see you in the next one.